Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is Justin Mann and in this video we're going to be going over all the basics of how to properly change the strings on your acoustic guitar. Changing strings on your guitar is a simple, easy, but important part of guitar maintenance that I think every guitar player should know how to do. Sure, you can take your guitar to a guitar shop and they can do all this stuff for you, but it is so much quicker and easier just to do it yourself at home. So in this beginner friendly video, I'll walk you through step by step of how to change the strings on your acoustic guitar. Let's get to it. How often you change strings on a guitar will vary and every guitar player has their own preferences. Some players will stick on more of a set schedule. For example, they may change strings every week, every two weeks, every month, whatever. Um, me personally, I change strings whenever I need to, whenever it becomes necessary. Um, I don't really stick to a set schedule. I let the guitar tell me when it needs a new set. Um, if the instrument is starting to sound kind of dull and lifeless, if it's getting sort of muddy and plunky sounding, I know it's time for a new set. And also if the strings look dirty or grimy, if they're getting rusty, if they feel grimy, or of course if you break a string then it is also definitely time for a new set. Okay, so before we get started, there are going to be some tools and supplies that we're going to be needing. Some of these items are going to be necessities, while others are just optional items that are going to make things a little bit quicker and easier for us. These include... A new pack of strings, obviously. A guitar string winder. Some type of wire cutters or end nippers. A large towel or blanket. And finally, a good sturdy table or workbench to work on. So, the first step before changing strings on your guitar, or doing any other guitar maintenance for that matter, is to get your work area ready to go. Make sure that your tabletop or your workbench is clean, that it is clear of any kind of clutter, and that you have laid down some sort of towel or blanket to avoid any potential scratches or scuffs to the guitar. Never work on a guitar that is laying on a bare tabletop or bench top. You're just asking for something to get scratched. The next step is to remove all the old strings from the guitar. Now, there are two different schools of thought here. Some people recommend that you remove all the strings from the guitar all at once. Others say that you should only remove and replace one or two strings at a time. Um, the logic there being that you don't take all the string tension off the guitar all at once. Now, me personally, I just remove all the strings at once. I've always done it this way and I've never really had any issues doing so. And I also like doing it this way because it allows me to give the guitar a good deep cleaning and a good wipe down and it allows me to get to a lot of areas on the guitar that are normally hard to get to because the strings are in place. Such as the guitar top under the strings here and next to the bridge, the fingerboard and the headstock here under the strings. Start by removing all of the tension from all six strings. You can either loosen all the strings by hand like this or you can use a string winder like this to speed things up a bit.
with all of the string tension removed you can go ahead and cut the strings you can do this anywhere but usually I will do this over the sound hole After the strings have been cut, carefully unwind the top half of the strings from the tuning pegs. Now you can remove the bottom portion of the strings from the guitar bridge. Now the strings are held in place by tapered pins that are a wedge stick fit into the guitar bridge. Each one of these round things here are the tapered pins. Um, as you can see there's one for each string. To remove the strings you have to first remove each one of those tapered pins and then the end of the string will come up and out of the guitar bridge. To remove these pins, you want to, with, one, with a free hand, reach into the guitar and feel around until you find the bottom of the first pin that you're going to remove. Then with your other hand, grab the top of the pin. Now simultaneously pull up with this hand on the pin while pushing up on the bottom of the pin with your other hand from inside the guitar. So we're going to pull up and push up at the same time simultaneously and do this gently. You don't want to break the pin and then that will come up and out like this. And for a close up there, you can see what these look like. They're just a pin tapered at either three to five degrees and a slot down the center for clearance around the string. So I'll set that aside for now and then we can remove the string from the hole in the bridge. With all of the strings removed from the guitar we can go ahead and give it a good deep cleaning which I've already done off camera and then we can move on to restringing. Okay, so now that you have removed the old strings from your guitar and given it a good deep cleaning, we can start restringing it. Now, before you start restringing a guitar, it's a good idea to arrange the new strings in order so you don't accidentally mix them up. Um, how you do this will vary a little bit depending on the individual pack of strings that you may have. Um, different manufacturers will package their products in different ways. Um, a very common way of doing it is... If I can get this out of packaging. Many manufacturers will package each individual string in its own envelope such as this. Okay, And each one of these envelopes will have a number written on it. These numbers correspond to the diameter of the string written in thousandth of an inch. Um, and obviously as the number gets higher the strings get thicker. So this is a good way of ranging the strings from thickest to thinnest or from thinnest to thickest, whichever. Other times, some manufacturers will package all the strings in one envelope or small box, whatever, but they will color code the end of the string here, the ball end of the string, according to its diameter. So, as I said, it will vary depending on the individual string manufacturer, but however it is, however the strings are identified, be sure to arrange them from thickest to thinnest, just so you don't mix them up as you're installing them. Okay, now, to start installing the new strings, you always want to begin 
by installing the ball into the string at the bridge down here first and then worry with winding around the tuning pegs up top second. Begin by selecting the first string that you're going to install. Um, you can start with any string you want. I'm just going to start with the high E string here just because. Take the string out of the envelope and carefully unwind it. When you're doing this, be careful to keep the ends of the string away from your eyes or face. Um, they kind of fly everywhere and the end of the strings can be kind of sharp, so just don't hurt yourself. Okay, there we go. Okay, so to install the ball end of the strings, what you're going to do is first off at the end of the string, I think that's in focus, about maybe, I don't know, half inch to three quarters of an inch from the ball end of the string, you're going to put a very slight bend and kink into it. Kind of like that. I hope that shows up on camera. Okay, then you're going to take the ball into the string and feed it down into the appropriate hole in the guitar bridge. Then you're going to take your taper pin, if this will focus, taper pin, bridge pin, whatever you want to call it, and you want to align up the slot in the pin with the string. And the string should be at the front of the hole in the bridge plate here. So, line up the slot with the string, push the pin into place, slightly, you don't want to push it the whole way down just yet, pull up on the string to seat it, and then finally push the pin firmly into place. Now, when you're installing these pins, you only want to use firm finger pressure. Never use any kind of clamp or mallet or anything to install these. Finger pressure is all you need. If you use anything more than finger pressure, you risk damaging something or getting the pins so tight that they're going to be a real pain to remove in the future. Now, one thing to make note of when you're installing the bridge pins on your guitar and when you're putting the strings in place is that the ball end of the string, if you look inside the guitar, should be positioned something like this. Okay, where this being the underside of the top of your guitar and then the pin extending inward into the guitar. The string should not be sitting something like this. The ball end of the string should not be resting on the tip of the bridge pin like this. If it rests like this, there's a good chance that the bridge pin will actually pull out once you start to tune up the guitar and put tension on the string. So that's just something to bear in mind of as you're installing everything. After you have the first string installed, just repeat the same procedure on the remaining five strings. After you have the ball ends of the strings installed down here at the bridge, I do recommend you take a small towel and lay over the top of the guitar up in here just so that these strings do not scratch the edge of the guitar as we're working on it. So usually I just take a small dish towel like this and lay it over the guitar just like that. So once you're ready to start winding the strings onto the tuning pegs, begin by selecting the first string you're going to be beginning with. It doesn't matter where you start here, um, I'm just going to start with the low E string. And what you want to do is first trim the string roughly to length. And to do that, what you're going to do is align the string in its nut slot up here. And you're going to pull the string slightly taut. Now, when you trim this to length, you do not want to cut the string off at its tuning peg. You need to allow some excess string to create some slack that you can wrap around the tuning pegs here. Now, opinions will vary as far as how much slack to allow. Um, personally, for the wound strings, the thicker strings on your guitar, I will use the tuning pegs as a guide. And typically, I will measure out the equivalent of the space between either one and a half to two tuning pegs for the slack. So what I will do here with the low E string, this is its tuner, I will measure out, there's a space of one tuning peg to about one and a half right in here. 
and that's where I'm going to cut the string at, right about there. After you have the string trimmed roughly to length, you want to take a look at the tuning peg and make sure that the hole or slot in the tuning peg is positioned perpendicular to the guitar neck, not parallel with it. Um, I just find that this makes it much easier to get the string started and to actually wind it onto the tuning peg. So just turn this until it's perpendicular like that and we're good to go. Now take your string and about, I don't know, maybe just shy of a half an inch from the end of the string, you want to put a sharp 90 degree bend into it like so. Okay, something like that. That will then hook into the hole in the tuning peg like this. And then what you want to do is carefully, so you don't poke yourself, wrap the string around the tuning, whoops, around the tuning peg like so to get it started. Hold slight tension on the string with this hand here, and then take your string winder and start winding it onto the tuning peg. Make sure as you're winding this that the tuning peg is turning in the correct direction, that the string is winding onto the inside of the tuning peg like this. You don't want the string winding onto the outside of the tuning peg over here. This is what you want. So start winding it and make sure that as you wind it, the string is also spiraling down the tuning peg towards the actual headstock of the guitar. And also make sure that the winds are not piling up on each other, that they are spiraling cleanly down towards the headstock. Give this a few turns until you have just slight tension on the string, enough that the string doesn't try to unravel and pop off the tuning peg. You want just enough tension right now that it will hold itself into place. And and that's enough to begin with. Now you want to repeat the same procedure with the four wound strings, the <clears throat> low E, A, D, and G strings. Okay, so we've gotten the bottom four strings installed here, and the procedure is gonna be the same for the top two strings, the high E and B string. Um, the only thing that you need to do differently is on the high strings, because they are unwound strings, they're basically just plain um, wires, you want to leave a little extra slack to allow a few extra turns around the tuning pegs. This is because the unwound strings have a tendency to slip on the tuning pegs a little more and a couple extra winds will help anchor the string into place. After winding the strings onto the tuning pegs, you're almost done. The last step in any string change on any guitar is to stretch the strings somewhat to aid in tuning stability. To do that, it is super simple. All you want to do is grab the string at various points along its length and give it a little bit of a tug, tug, a little bit of a bend to help the string stretch out and also help it settle in place on the tuning pegs and at the bridge. So to do that, what you want to do is grip the string kind of like this and sort of tug on it like this in this sort of motion, okay? So with the high E string, what you want to do is gently grab the string like this, starting at the head at the um, headstock end, and gently tug on it like this. Do it a few times, move a few inches down the string, and do it again. And just repeat this the whole length of the excuse me, the whole length of the string until you get down here to the bridge. Now do this on all of the remaining strings. When you do this, you want to do it firmly but you don't want to do it so hard that you, of course, you know, accidentally break a string. 
then we'd have to do all this all over again. Okay, so after you stretch the strings out like that, um, tune the guitar up roughly in tune, and then actually repeat this procedure again, stretch them out again, and keep doing this until the guitar actually stays in tune. You might have to do this two or three times. And then after that, you're all done. You're good to tune up the guitar one last time and start playing. Alright folks, that's it. You're done. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. And also, be sure to check out my blog, theguitargearguru.com. That will be linked below this video. So thanks again for your time, and have a good one. Stay safe.